Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get into this video the right way, okay? We may or may not have had a embarrassing malfunction when we try to fire up the live stream about an hour ago, but it looks like we should be good to go to dive into some Dynasty teams, break them down, and before we get into it, you know what I'm going to say. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you play Dynasty Fantasy Football, and if you play Dynasty Fantasy Football, one access to my Dynasty rankings, one access to the Dynasty rankings, and all the premium content of your favorite Dynasty creators. You can find all of that on flockfantasy.com. With flockfantasy.com and promo code flock, you're going to get 30% off any subscription and yours truly will go through and break down your dynasty fantasy football team with the podcast. Everybody here is a member of flockfantasy.com. Going to be super happy to go through and check out these teams. Now, our first one coming out from call me a stop. My man, thank you so much for being a member of the flock says, Hey Mason decided to join the flock recently after being introduced to your YouTube videos late last season. 12 team Superflex PPR tied in premium league with six points per passing touchdown. Start nine. We already had a rookie draft. I feel like my team's in a pretty good spot as far as youth and being able to compete this season. I finished fifth last year. I have some nice flexibility with two future firsts that will most likely be mid to late selections. The only thing I'm worried about is our quarterback two spot. Any advice for the upcoming season? So again, thank you so much, my man, for being a member of the flock. Going to be super happy to go through and check this out. So as we pull up the starting lineup here, I mean, I do want to point out with this being a six point passing touchdown league, I mean, naturally quarterback's going to be a little more important because they're going to make up a higher percentage of your starting lineup output on a week to week basis. Of course, it's not going to be a massive, massive difference, right? We're talking one to 2%, but still it'll be a little bit more important to go through and grab that quarterback. And when we're targeting that second guy, when we're targeting our elite level option, in a six-point passing touchdown league, and I'm sure that 99% of y'all have are already heard me say this a million times now, I am going to be more likely to go through and target the guy that can have a ton of passing volume, right? If you're playing in a four-point passing touchdown format, there it's like, okay, well, let's get Lamar Jackson. Let's get Justin Fields. Those guys that have so much rushing upside, it doesn't really matter how the passing volume is because those pocket passers such as Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, they're going to have such a hard time catching up on our rushing quarterback that can get to 60 rushing yards in a single game. But no, six-point passing touchdown, they are going to be actually more likely to be able to catch up to those rushers. Like here, hell yes, I'll take Joe Burrow over Justin Fields, even in a redraft league, that's six points per passing touchdown. So love having Joe Burrow QB1. Mac Jones actually a little bit better in a six-point passing touchdown league than he would be in a 4.1. Like we said, we're going to go a little heavier on the pocket passing options. We have Ryan Tannehill down there on the bench. Outside of that, we don't really have anybody. So I completely agree with you, right? We do want to bring in a quarterback too if we are going to compete this next season. We'll talk about exactly how we're doing that in just one second. But going over to running back, we're currently looking at Brees Hall, Tony Pollard in the starting lineup. I mean, down there on the bench, we have Khalil Herbert, who's possibly the starting running back in Chicago. We don't know just yet. I mean, with Khalil Herbert, obviously, it's a running back that's had a lot of success whenever he's been given the opportunity. But at the same time, I mean, they do bring in Deontay Foreman. They do bring in Roshan Johnson. So it's not necessarily like you're guaranteed to be in a spot where 100%, yes, Khalil Herbert is the starter this next year. So in general, this is a running back room that definitely has a high ceiling. Obviously, I love Brees Hall for the long term. We just have to kind of wait to see what the ACL situation is going to be like this next year. Pollard should be very strong as an option in 2023. I can't be guaranteeing that he's great in 2024 and beyond. Of course, this is a running back that was drafted back in 2019. This is a running back that's about to be pushing 27 years old once we get to 2024. I mean, that's where we're at with guys like Kamara, Dalvin, Mixon, and you're seeing that their dynasty values are just cratering just because they're age. And with Khalil Herbert, he may not even be the starting running back in Chicago. So this is a running back room that has a wide range of outcomes, right? It's a running back room that could honestly be pretty bad. It's a running back room that could be great as well. Very difficult to know what we're going to be looking at as of now. Now going over to wide receiver, we have a lot of youth as well. We have Chris Olave, George Pickens, both going into year two. I mean, these are guys that fit a rebuilding team or a contending team, right? It doesn't matter if you're saying, Mason, I'm going to go for it this season. Let, let's go ahead. Let's push in. Let's try to win in 2023. Or Mason, you know what, man? It's not working out. I'm going to play for 2024. You can build around Chris Olave as well as George Pickens regardless. And then the same thing if you are going to be looking at Quentin Johnston, Jordan Addison. 
I mean, I love these guys for the long term. Don't necessarily know exactly what we should expect this next season. But, I mean, you're going to be in a good spot for the long term and short term in the starting lineup at wide receiver. Kadarius Tony has some upside. Don't exactly know what to expect there. Outside of that, don't have too, too much depth at the position. So, in general, I'd say wide receiver is very similar to running back, right? I mean, we're, we see a very wide range of outcomes where, yeah, I mean, maybe Quentin Johnston and Jordan Addison hit the ground running. Maybe we're able to compete this season. But also, it's a possibility that Johnston and Addison don't really do anything year one. It's a possibility that it takes until like 2024 for these guys to actually help you compete. I mean, just think about what George Pickens did his rookie season. Pickens flashed, and now you're excited about him in 2024. But in reality, did George Pickens help anybody win their league last year? No. Yeah, George Pickens relatively had no impact last season. So if we're looking at this, I mean, I want to stay flexible with this team top to bottom. I mean, with Dallas Goddard, this is a tight end that at the end of the day is definitely a contending asset. Drafted back in 2018, he's improved his receiving yards on a per game basis every single season in his NFL career. I love me some Dallas Goddard. But at the same time, you're not really building around Dallas Goddard for 2024, right? We're not building around Dallas Goddard for 2025, which we can say that we are with Brees Hall, with Quentin Johnston, with Jordan Addison, with Chris Olave, with George Pickens, with Joe Burrow. Those are going to be the foundational pieces of this team, regardless of what happens. So overall, top to bottom, like you were saying, we have a nice blend of youth and also guys that could help us be competitive in 2023. And just like you were saying, the big time hole that we have is actually going to be at that quarterback slot. Now, looking at the first round picks that we have, what I really like to see is we have our own first, right? I mean, we are sitting here with our 2024 first and someone else's. So we are in a spot that if we really wanted to go through and maybe play for the long term, we can. We can play for 2024. That's definitely an option for us. I'm just trying to sit here and think about what it would take for us to pivot over to that 2024 start. Because the last thing I would want to do with this team is go through and trade away our 2024 first to solve our quarterback two issue. And then we get to the start, start of the season and Brees Hall isn't ready, right? And I say the, I mean, torn ACL is going to keep him out and he starts on the PUP list. I don't expect that to be the case, but it's a non-0% chance. Say that Quentin Johnston, Jordan Addison don't hit the ground running. Say KJ Osborne's taking snaps from Jordan Addison for the first few months. Say Joshua Palmer's taking snaps from Quentin Johnston for the first few months. And they still may be phenomenal options down the stretch. They may still be phenomenal options in 2024, but we're not able to win football games with them this season. There are a few things like that that could go wrong. And that's not even accounting for the fact that, hell, Tony Pollard could have a high ankle sprain in training camp. There's so many different things that could happen to this team to negatively impact it where I would much prefer, honestly, with this team, with how young we are planning for 2024. I don't think we are to the point where it's let's sell Dallas Goddard, let's sell Tony Pollard, and let's go through and let's get 2024 picks. I think that this team is good enough and has a high enough ceiling for this next season and that I would rather go into the year saying, okay, well, we're going to do the best we can for the first month. Obviously, we'll submit our starting lineup, but we are not selling those 2024 picks. We're primarily planning around 2024. And if our team surprises us, and if we are actually winning games, if through the first month we're 3-1, and one, we're 4-0, and oh, Johnston and Addison are making a day one impact, then at that point, we can go through and take a 2024 first, trade for a quarterback like Geno Smith, and then go through and really push to win this year. However, if those rookie wide receivers don't hit the ground running, if it takes Brees Hall some time to get accustomed from that torn ACL, then what we may have to do is we may then have to pivot off the veterans. The contending assets with this team, in my mind, are going to be Tony Pollard and Dallas Goddard. Now, how we go through and determine what is a contending asset versus a rebuilding asset is if you ask yourself, is if Tony Pollard is the running back 10 from a points per game perspective this next year, next offseason, is he worth more or less in Dynasty Fantasy Football? It's probably worth less just because of his age and just because of how Dynasty owners treat these running backs off their rookie contracts. If Dallas Goddard is the tight end five from a points per game basis, is he worth more or less next offseason than he is now. It's probably worth slightly less just because the man was drafted back in 2018. So if we're looking at those assets, if we start off slow, if we start off 0-4, 1-3, and 
Johnson and Addison aren't doing much. Those will be players we're looking to sell for 2024 picks. Then we could possibly tank to get the 101 and earn Caleb Williams. Bring Caleb Williams to a team with Joe Burrow, Caleb Williams, Brees Hall, Chris Olave, George Pickens going into year three. Johnston Addison going into year two and then the additional future first round picks that we have next offseason and then we could trade those for veterans or we could possibly go through and take rookies with the picks depending on how we like them but I think that's all we have for you in this thank you so much my man for being a member of the flock and supporting the channel I really hope we were able to help you out in some way here and as always if there's anything that I can do for you please do not hesitate to reach out to me and let me know I'd be super happy to help you out in any way that I can my friend but thank you so much for everything but let's go ahead and let's dive into our next team here. This one coming out from Kevin. Kevin, my man, thank you so much for being a member of the flock and supporting the channel. Saying, hello, Mason. It's a 12-team Superflex Titan Premium League. I just finished my first Dynasty League, Dynasty League season, and I made my share of mistakes this past year. Despite that, I think my team has potential and would love to hear your thoughts on where to go next. We have the 102, the 108, the 110, the 112, 205, 206, 308, 312, 402. So if this is your first year in rookie drafts, my friend, I really want to just stress that those late third round picks, those fourth round picks, they're nothing. They're nothing if somehow, some way you're able to find this year's Isaiah Pacheco. Bravo, but never be relying on anybody you take there. And in reality, if you have a fourth round pick, just feel free to use it as a sweetener to get any deal done. But in 2024, we have all our picks and an additional first, probably late. The guy at the 101 is no viable quarterbacks, so there's a very real possibility that Bijan may be out there at the 102. It would be phenomenal, but I doubt it. It would be great, but I doubt it. He's rumored to be targeting Anthony Richardson. I'm not married to the late first round picks and wouldn't mind trading them away. Here's what I would do if I were you. If it's rumored that this guy is going to go Anthony Richardson over Bijan Robinson at one and we're sitting at two, I would shoot him a message and go, Hey man, I, I know you need to get a, a quarterback in here. I, I know you want to get Anthony Richardson. I will trade up for Bijan Robinson, give you a little bit and you can still get Richardson at too. Like if you can lock in Bijan Robinson cheaply, like if he really wants Richardson and we can sell him the one Oh two and the two Oh five and get the one and one, I'm willing to do that. Hell throw in the third, throw in the fourth. Who cares if we can move that one spot up and make it a win-win deal for both parties. I would really like to take the initiative and go make that move rather than sitting here and going, oh, I really hope he goes Anthony Richardson. Yeah, give him a reason to go Anthony Richardson, if that makes sense. But let's pull up this team. So I'm assuming this is the starting lineup. Haven't looked at a dynasty league in this view, though. This is Kyler Murray, Trevor Lawrence at quarterback. So, I mean, at quarterback, I really like the long-term upside. Now, of course, the issue is the Kyler Murray injury. We don't necessarily know exactly what we should expect in terms of his availability this next year. I would imagine that we're not really getting much from Kyler Murray for the first eight or so weeks of the season, but who knows? And maybe I'm wrong. Trevor Lawrence, we're extremely excited about long-term and short-term. Like, having these quarterbacks, you're in a really good spot in that you can compete immediately or you could compete in 2024, 2025, really whatever you want to do. We have no third quarterback. So, I mean, it would be nice to grab another quarterback in the rookie draft. That way we're able to start someone for Kyler Murray at the beginning portion of the year. And on top of that, just nice to have a third quarterback in a super flex league. Going over to running back, we have nobody. We have Khalil Herbert right now in the starting lineup. Going down to the bench, we have Alexander Madison. I mean, if Dalvin Cook's released, if Dalvin Cook's traded, hell, then all of a sudden, I mean, obviously, Alexander Madison's a really exciting option, but really just for this season. So in general, I mean, running back, we could have nobody, maybe, just maybe. We have a couple of running back twos here. We'll see. Wide receiver, we're building around C.D. Lamb, D.J. Moore, Drake, London. Really like Lamb and London here. And going down to the bench, we have Sky Moore. We have Rashad Bateman. We have Alec Pierce. So maybe some young wide receivers with upside, but more so long shots than anything. So in general, if we're looking at this team top to bottom, I'd say this is a team that's definitely playing for 2024. This is a team that I think that we should go through and look to rebuild with just because even if we were to hit on our rookie picks, assuming Calabari is not ready to start the season, even if somehow, some way we get Bijan Robinson, like that's best case scenario. And we're still probably not that strong, right? So what I would much prefer doing is I would rather just go, okay, well, let's pivot hard. Let's go for the 101 in 2024, especially considering the fact that we have our own first round pick. 
and we can bring in Caleb Williams at that time. So if we're looking at potential assets to sell, we're going to go through and we are going to sell DJ Moore here, my man. I think that it makes a lot of sense to just go through and say, okay, well, at the end of the day, if you're looking at DJ Moore, yes, he was drafted back in 2018. He's still incredibly young, but he's going into year six. So if you look at DJ Moore and doing the same test that we had with the players previous to this, if DJ Moore in year six is the wide receiver 12 from a points per game perspective this year, is he worth more or less in dynasty leagues going into year seven next off season? He's probably either worth slightly more, slightly less, or about the same, right? And that's almost best case scenario. That's saying DJ Moore is a wide receiver one in fantasy. Now, of course, if DJ Moore is instead a wide receiver two, a wide receiver three, he's had three straight seasons of being a wide receiver three in fantasy, then at that point, I mean, he's going to be worth way less. So in my mind, it makes a lot of sense to go through and look to sell DJ Moore on a rebuilding roster. And if Dalvin Cook is traded, if Dalvin Cook is cut, then we will also be looking to sell Alexander Madison. And just in general, in dynasty leagues, if you are looking at a running back, the vast majority of their value is going to come from the perceived opportunity that they have. Running back value is based on opportunity, which leads to production that is extremely volatile year to year. Alexander Madison may have the opportunity this season, but not in 2024. So the second that he has that perceived opportunity, we'll look to go ahead and we'll look to sell. But looking at our rookie picks, the 102, like I said, we had that trade that we could possibly go through and get Bijan Robinson with. If not, Anthony Richardson is our selection. I think if we go through and we take Anthony Richardson there, then we have a combo of Lawrence, Kyler, Richardson going into year three. Maybe we go through and sell one of these quarterbacks next offseason, especially if we are in the 101 and get Caleb Williams. Or maybe we sell the 101 for a massive, massive haul next year, which we should be similar to what maybe what we're going to expect with I don't know, maybe a Bijan Robinson type package this offseason. Saying we have the 108, the 110, 112 as well. If we're going to be looking at pick eight, this is a range where we're most likely going to be going wide receiver and we're still in a pretty good spot at pick eight. If we're at pick eight, we're going to be able to get Johnston or Addison, really whoever falls. And of course, that's operating under the assumption that the first six guys in our rookie rankings are already off the board. Pick 10, you're most likely going to be looking at Dalton Kincaid in a tight end premium format. But to be honest with you, my friend, I wouldn't mind at all if we have all these picks to try to move pick 10. I think if you are playing for 2024, I wouldn't mind selling pick 10 and getting a 2024 first. I would say the same thing about pick 12, or you could also go through and try to package up pick 10 and then a second rounder and try to move up to maybe pick seven. If we could go like pick 10, the 205, the 312 and 402 and get to pick seven. That way we can lock in Jordan Addison and Quentin Johnston and have those productive wide receivers for 2024 when we're looking to contend with this league. I think that makes a lot of sense. But overall, I mean, this is a team that if we just make a few of those moves in this rookie draft, trade a couple of these veterans for future selections, like if we trade DJ Moore for a 2024 first and second, I think we'll be in a phenomenal spot because we have some cornerstone assets to build around, right? We have Kyler, we have Lawrence, probably Anthony Richardson with that 102. We have London, we have Lamb, and then we're going to be able to pick up additional future assets based on those trades that we are mentioning. I think you'll be in a really, really good spot, my friend. But again, thank you so much for being a member of the flock. I really hope we were able to help you out. And as always, if there's anything that I can do for you, my friend, please do not hesitate to reach out to us and let us know. I'd be super happy to help out in any way possible. But as, actually, before we get to our next team, I mean, I forgot to mention this. I just want to make sure everybody's taking advantage. I know 99% of y'all are already on Underdog. Right now, Underdog has a free James Harden bet out there at half a point. Y'all know I'm not an NBA ex expert, but whenever they have a free bet, regardless of what it is, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take it and get y'all to do the same. I know 99% of y'all are already on Underdog. But if you aren't and you want to get into an underdog draft with us, underdog has drafts in every state that's not in black. And it has the pickums, including the free James Harden line in every state that is yellow in this map and everywhere in Canada outside of Ontario. But definitely make sure you're taking advantage of that. Y'all know I'm not talking in the NBA, but when we have a free bet, I have to. But anyway, let's go over to our next team. This one coming out from TG10. Thank you, my man says. 
Hey, Mason, big fan. 10-team dynasty, one quarterback, PPR, four-point passing touchdown. We have all our picks in 2024 and beyond, plus an extra 2024 first. Have someone looking to offer CMC for Jalen Waddle. What moves do you think we should make, or should we stand pat until the season and go from there? We also have Jamison Williams on the taxi squad. Thanks. So thank you again for being a member of the flock, my friend. But in general, as we pull this up, I'm not going to want to trade Jalen Waddle for Christian McCaffrey. I mean, if you're looking at Waddle, he's a great asset in that you are getting a nice blend of both. I want to say short-term production and long-term value with Christian McCaffrey. You're not getting that blend with Christian McCaffrey. You're getting one thing and that is short-term production. So in general, I really like building my dynasty teams around those guys like Jalen Waddle, like CD Lamb. That's personally what I view as the elite level assets. Maybe once we get to this season and we realize, yeah, 100%, I'm a contending team. 100%, we should go through and we should look to make a push for this year. Then at that point, that's the time that I'm willing to go through and sell guys like Jalen Waddle for CD Lamb. But I mean, right now, that's not something we're looking to do. But going into this team, one quarterback format where we are going to be starting Dak Prescott. So obviously one quarterback format, QB is not going to matter too, too much. Dak Prescott's going to be just fine. If we're going to go through and look at who we have on the bench here. I mean, we're sitting with Deshaun Watson on the bench as well. So maybe Deshaun Watson's our actual starter over Dak, but regardless of whoever it is, we'll probably just play the matchups and we'll be in a pretty good spot regardless. I don't think we have to worry about quarterback here. Going over to running back, we have DeAndre Swift as well as Javante Williams. Unsure if you had a chance to read the DeAndre Swift article that we had on the site about two weeks ago at this point. But I mean, essentially, we went through and laid out all the reasons why we should be looking to actually go through and sell DeAndre Swift. If you haven't read it, I would recommend it. I mean, I just personally don't think we should be excited about where DeAndre Swift is this next year. It's a running back that I believe has had one to two games with more than 15 carries in his entire NFL career. Now, of course, that's off the top of my head. Go read the article. It is laughable, the lack of volume that you've had. DeAndre Swift gets the vast majority of his production as a pass catcher, which has been great if you're in an offense with Jared Goff, with Matthew Stafford, a quarterback that actually looks to just go ahead and drop back and dump the ball off if the pocket collapses. But once you get over to an offense that has a quarterback that can run like Jalen Hurts, when that pocket collapses, you may see him scramble. You're probably not going to see him just look to dump the ball off to DeAndre Swift. Javante Williams may not even be playing halfway through this year. Like with Javante, based on the devastating knee injury that he had, I think that we have to operate under the assumption that we probably don't get Javante Williams until week eight. David Montgomery, I mean, I think it'll be a fine depth play, right? Like if Montgomery's your running back three, I think we're fine with it. But overall, top to bottom, this is a running back room that if you would have showed it to me last year, I would have been extremely excited. But based on what we've seen with these running backs over the past few months, particularly just over the past like 10 months or so, I mean, these guys have plummeted. And I think you have to be way more concerned about where we stand at running back. Now, going over to wide receiver, this is the strength of the team. We have London, we have Waddle, we have Lamb. We have players that we can build around for the long term. We have players that we can build around for the short term. Really whatever we're wanting to do, right? If we're going to go over and look at the bench, we have some upside guys. We have Tony, we have Bateman. But in general, we have guys that we can look to go ahead and we can look to build around and not have to worry about. Now at tight end, we have Kyle Pitts, the tight end one in Dynasty. Hell, someone I'm willing to go through and make that bet on. He was the best tight end prospect of all time. We weren't drafting him in rookie drafts because rookie tight ends don't produce. Year two tight ends don't produce, aka don't draft Dalton Kincaid in rookie drafts this year. But if you're going to be looking at Kyle Pitts, he's still younger than Zay Flowers. I'm going to go ahead. This is the time to buy in on Kyle Pitts. I think that he's my tight end one in Dynasty. Completely fine with it. Now we're looking at our rookie picks. This is why I'm not willing to say burn it down play for 2024. I think this team would have been on the path to rebuild and play for 2024. But once we bring in Bijan Robinson, the entire team's changed, right? You bring in Bijan running back one. Then at that point, instead of having to rely on the combo of Deandre Swift, as well as Javante Williams, these are more upside shots. They're not guys that have to hit for this team to be successful. We probably just need one of these players to turn into an impact guy to be successful. 
because David Montgomery is probably going to be startable no matter what. Now, the ceiling with Montgomery is most likely low, but you can probably start him as a running back two, running back three this year, depending on matchup. So we'll have 100% a usable player in David Montgomery, and hopefully one of DeAndre Swift or Javante Williams is fine to go with this next season. But we know for a damn fact, Bijan Robinson is someone we can build around running back one in dynasty right now in redraft leagues. He's going as the running back two for this next year. And the man's 21 years old. So if you bring him into this roster and it just changes the roles overall, where we're significantly more comfortable with our flexes because Swift and Javante go down. And we don't necessarily have to rely on both Swift and Javante Williams turning into something. This is a team that I'm actually fine going into the season, assuming that we are contending. Now, if all hell breaks loose, right? If everything goes wrong, say CD Lamb tears an ACL and then Javante Williams isn't back till week eight and somehow, some way, Bijan Robinson isn't producing early. If all hell breaks loose and everything goes wrong, then maybe we pivot over to rebuild for 2024. And then maybe at that point, we look to sell off some veteran assets Regardless of if we're rebuilding or contending, I'm probably throwing DeAndre Swift on the trade block to see what we could get. Probably if we decide to rebuild, selling David Montgomery. If we decide to rebuild, selling Javante Williams, who's going into year three now at the running back position. But that's just if we're looking to rebuild. In reality, I think that we're in a pretty good spot to sit on our hands and let this play out. As Swift is really the only player that I'm going to look to sell. And one thing I do want to address, and I know we're going to probably have some questions about this in general, and I'm sure that you've been thinking about it, but having the big three Atlanta Falcons players on your roster, right? I mean, we're currently sitting here with Kyle Pitts, Drake London already, and we're about to add in Bijan Robinson. Like a lot of people would be worried about this. And I mean, I understand why, but you don't need to be okay. I, it's not great that this is not a phenomenal offense. I would much prefer if this was an offense that, yes, like we could sit here and say, yeah, I mean, the Atlanta Falcons would be top 10 overall in points. But in general, when we were rostering multiple pieces from the same offense, at the end of the day, we are making a consolidated bet. We we're making a consolidated bet that they will be better than the market indicates and that the Atlanta Falcons are better than the market is predicting. Then we hit on Pitts. We hit on London and we hit on Bijan Robinson. So I'm going to be completely fine for you to go through and just kind of sit here and wait. Don't make any moves outside of looking to move DeAndre Swift. If all hell breaks loose, we can look to go through and we could look to push for 2024. But in reality, I just think you're in a really good spot, my friend. I don't think you have to do that. But real quick, we have a question coming out from Tommy Gnosis. How do you send Mason's roster to break down? I signed up for a mother flocker a few months ago, but just don't understand the discord. Can you just message the general chat there? Okay, so let me break this down real quick. So if you signed up to flock fantasy in your mother flocker with promo code flock, my friend, send your flock fantasy username in the join here section. Wait about a day. And once you've done that, then the developers are going to go ahead and give you your role. They're going to link your flock fantasy account with your discord account once that's done then that will unlock the roster submissions tab for you for mine if you use promo code flock and then you'll just go through and send your team here my friend and then we go through and um, run through them in order and every team that i break down whether it's in a personalized podcast or a live stream i'll send you a dm with exactly how to access it make it very easy for you but thank you again my friend and yeah thank you so much for everybody out here Really do appreciate all, all of y'all. I really hope that we are able to help out and provide some type of value. And as always, if you haven't done so already, drop a like on this, subscribe if you play Dynasty. And if you want to get your roster broken down on one of these live streams, flogfantasy.com, promo code flog, 30% off any subscription. And on top of that, you get your team on one of these live streams, plus so much more. Really do appreciate y'all though. Really hope you have a great day and really hope that we get to see you with the live stream tomorrow.